Hey everyone, I'm Dustin. I have nearly 20 years experience in the bike and e-bike industry. And today I'm gonna to answer the question, what's the price of an e-bike? Stick around. All right, so today we're gonna to discuss the question, what's the price of an e-bike? But before I get into it, hit the subscribe button below. Stay in touch with us here at 630. Be the first to know about all the new content giveaways we do, and of course our new product releases. All right, you're shopping for an e-bike and you're wondering the price, what kind of price should you pay? Um, it's a very confusing question because there's a lot of different prices of electric bikes in the market. So let's get into it and discuss. Also, before I get into it, find these two bikes linked below in the description. If you like them, check them out on 630.com. You'll find the links in the description for those. All right, and this is our every journey 500 watt e-bike. All right, price of an electric bike can vary vastly from $400 on walmart.com and Eaton, uh, Amazon, all the way up to $10,000, $12,000. A lot of factors play into the pricing of an e-bike as, as it does into a lot of consumer products. The cost of a product isn't just about the componentry, it's about many other things like the support that a brand offers you, um, the warranty a brand offers you, um, return windows factor in because all of these optional services and add-ons that a brand would offer you add costs. So if a company has a more liberal return policy, they're most likely taking more returns, which means a, uh, another reduction to the profit that that company was making. A lot of times that's just gonna show up at an increased price. So it really can depend, it really depends on what is most important to you as a consumer. Now, if you're shopping for an e-bike and you see e-bikes in the four to $700 range, and by the way, I'm just going to make blanket statements. There's always gonna be anomalies in these situations. So I can't speak to every brand in the market. I am just going to speak to generalizations of what I, uh, feel is true for these different segments that I'm about to talk to. So if you're looking for an electric bike in a four to $700 range, the assumptions I would make is you're gonna have a company that's not gonna offer great support. There's not gonna be a large customer service team backing them up. Uh, they're not gonna be great on warranty parts. They're not gonna have a very liberal return window. And generally speaking, you're gonna be on your own. If that product works and you don't have issues, it'll be a gem. If you do have issues, that could be where you all of a sudden run into trouble, right? Um, if you need parts, you need things like that. Most likely an e-bike being sold uh, in the four to $700 range, that company is not gonna be super interested in providing individualized, customized care for every customer because that's gonna be a volume-based electric bike uh, brand. And that's true of most consumer products. When you get into lower price points, it's a volume systems based product, not about service. And if you have issues, either throw that product out and start again, or maybe, maybe, maybe you could get them to take a return on it, but getting any sort of after sales service without maybe purchasing some sort of extended warranty, uh, it's gonna be few and far between. Now, if you're looking for something in the 700 to $1,000 range, a lot of the principles I just talked about will be true, however, as you get closer to that $1,000 range, there are some really reputable brands out there that make a good product for a thousand bucks, stripped down, bare bones e-bikes. Uh, we are currently offering some of our e-bikes for $1,000 and there's service available and um, they should be good. Now, as you go up in price, the commitment of the brand is always gonna go up to that consumer, right? It's true of anything like a Mercedes Benz, a Porsche, whatever it may be. If somebody has an issue with a Porsche, the brand, the, third, the dealership, they're gonna listen to you, they're gonna fix it right away. As you come down in price, not to say, uh, like we stand behind all of our bikes at $1,000, but the companies that are typically in that seven, $800 range may not be as expedient to get back to you as say, if you had an issue with a $3,000 e-bike um, or a $4,000 e-bike, right? So again, I would just say, you know, what is most important to you? What are you looking for? Uh, and you know, what are your needs as a rider? Now, 
when you start to get into that thousand to, I'm gonna say $2,000 range, that is really a sweet spot where you've got a lot of reputable brands that have good service, they stand behind their product, they have decent return windows, um, you can get a hold of them, and you know you can feel rest assured that the bike you purchase, you'll be able to get some level of service if you have any issues going on in the time of your ownership. So again, not to say that you can't get any level of service at any price, but once you get into that $1,000 to $2,000 range, there's a lot of companies, and that's an expensive product at that point. There's a reputation these brands want to uphold. There's a level of service they want to uphold. And then when you start getting into $1,000 to $2,000 range, you know the brands can start to justify and rationalize higher quality components, right? So like we use a higher quality battery, something with cells that you know are gonna last. If you're looking in the four to $700 range, again, these brands are focusing mostly on price. It would be the example of a Spirit Airlines compared to a Delta Airlines, right? The priorities of both. When you get into Spirit, maybe smaller seats, harder seats, legs, less leg room, you go into a Delta, they're gonna upgrade those seats a little bit, they're gonna have more leg room, um, such things like that. You may disagree at that point, but generally that's how those two airlines position themselves in the marketplace. And it's similar with e-bikes, right? So in the four to $700 price point, it's about, it's about cost. It's about finding the components that will do the job and keep the product in that four to $700 range. When you get over $1,000, the priorities are different. It's how do we use specs and use elements on this bike that are going to last, that are gonna signify quality. It's going to go towards building a bike that a consumer can have for years and years and years. And the brand wants to, to stand behind it. There is a commitment of that company to build a brand. Building a brand on the lower spectrum of a consumer product price is very difficult for companies. Unless you get to such a massive scale that you can increase your profit margins and it allows you to reinvest in brand building activities. But generally speaking, on the lower price point of anything, uh, those companies are not interested in a brand building exercise. They're interested in efficiency, they're interested in a system, and they're interested in the number of units sold at the most efficient way possible. So $1,000 to $2,000 is a good sweet spot price for e-bikes. Now, if you go above that 2,000 and up, most likely you're gonna be looking at some of the best components, the best cells in your battery, the best motors, the best of everything. And that's why the prices are gonna go up. Companies that are producing you know, e-bikes north of $2,000 have a vested interest in putting products out there um, that they'll always stand behind. Now at 630, we are uh, a brand-driven company. We wanna stand behind our brand. We offer service, replacements, customer service on all the bikes we produce. We have a full team of people that are constantly answering the phones. But coupled with that, we are also about value. So it's the blending of how can we give the best possible product with the best possible components without driving costs um, through the roof. Because the majority of consumers are not gonna be out there spending north of $2,000 on electric bikes. Um, that's just the way it is. And so different product, different e-bikes, different segments, you have to think about who you are as a consumer. What do you want to know or what do you appreciate the most? What do you want the most? The other thing too is before you jump in, research that brand, get to know them. Maybe you can look up the brand ethos, what they stand for, what customers say about them and get an idea is who are they as a brand? How do they operate as a brand? Um, then you can justify the price you're gonna pay uh, for your e-bike. So I hope that helps in figuring out price of an e-bike and how much you should pay for an e-bike. If you have any other questions at all, please comment below uh, or email us, the team at 630.com or call us 310-982-2877. Also, if you're in the market for an e-bike, you don't know what you want, go to our website, 630.com. Take our proprietary body fit quiz. Answer a few questions about your body and your life we'll recommend the perfect e-bike for you. And we offer you a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you don't love your e-bike in the first 30 days, send it back, no questions asked, no money out of your pocket. Lastly, be a part of our community, the Facebook Peddlers Group, and download our app. Make new friends before you purchase. Um, see how other riders are tracking their rides on the app. Ask questions in advance of purchasing to the community. Then once you have your e-bike, 
make new friends in the group, post photos, it's tons of fun. So thanks for sticking around and don't forget, it's your journey, your experience, enjoy the ride.